I've taken an insulation resistance reading here and I've got a a circuit, circuit number four. I've measured between live and earth and I've got 200 mega ohms on my multifunction tester. Brilliant. Does that mean that circuit's good? Does that mean that the regulation is complied with though? Well, no, not yet. Now, I commonly interpret the regs to say a circuit that is up to 500 volts will be tested at 500 volts DC and the pass mark must be obviously greater or equal to 1 mega ohm and that's why we go well yeah that's good and th this is the area of the regs here that I'm talking about but let's read the regulation more carefully the regulation actually says The insulation resistance measured with the test voltages indicated in table 61 shall be considered satisfactory if the main switchboard and each distribution circuit tested is done separately with all of its final circuits connected with the current using equipment disconnected. Then the insulation resistance shall not be less than the appropriate value given in this table. So the value of 1 mega ohm is only acceptable for the board of this circuit when I've combined all of the other values for the other circuits on this board. For all I know, there could be another circuit on this board when combined with this resistance in parallel results in an overall insulation resistance coming lower than one mega ohm. And that's why when you do your inspection and testing courses, we get this common error we've got to study with insulation testing where we go one over RT is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus 1 over R3, blah, 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 blah. To verify the wine regulation has been complied with, we need to combine all of the individual circuits insulation resistances on one consumer unit, calculate the overall value of insulation resistance, and compare that to this table. I've measured one circuit. Yeah, it's really large. I probably wouldn't worry about it. It's 200 mega ohm. But the wine regulation says the entire board. So I need the rest of the board. Well, there they are. There's some values I've got for other circuits. So circuit one, 250 mega ohm. Circuit two, 150 mega ohm. Circuit three, 80 mega ohm. Circuit 5, 100 mega ohm, and circuit 6, 125 mega ohm. Completely made up all this, but let's work with that. So these are the individual circuits readings. So this could be a dwelling. Could be a small fuse board, six-way. Doesn't matter. But now I have all of the values. I can combine them, calculate their overall value as if I was testing the board to check this table. So let's do that. So this is going to become 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 which we can call circuit 1 which is 250 plus 1 over R2 which is 150 plus 1 over R3 which is 80 plus 1 over R4 which is our circuit which is 200 plus 1 over 100 and finally 1 over 125 now there are many methods to do this you can use the common denominator method you can adjust it, you can do all that. You can work out the individual decimals, add them up and go over one over a T. Or you could actually put this into a calculator. And if you have a calculator, um, <clears throat> anything scientific will do. Or if you've got your iPhone and you just turn it sideways, that will work. But you'll see there's a button on there that will have the 1 over X on it. And what you need to do is enter these fractions in the calculator. All right. Now, while I look around for mine, I'll have to just pause this and resume it when I find it. Okay. So, found some. Um, my iPhone is dead right now. Um, but if you t pop the calculator up on that, 
and you turn it sideways, it becomes scientific and has a 1 over X button on it that you, looks just like that there. Um, and I'm going to use this calculator in the same way so you can see how it will work. So, I'm going to start with an Android one. So, in this phone, or in this calculator, and we have a calculator, then great. If you're using your phone, which I anticipate some of you are going to try right now, then this is what we've got. You can see just above the percentage there is 1 over x. Now, to hit that, I've got to go shift 1 over x. So, I'm going to go shift 1 over x a lot right now. So, let's just see if you can follow this. So, I'm going to have to go 250. So, 250 shift. 1 over x. That changes that 250 to the fraction of 1 over 250. Add that to 150. Shift 1 over x. Add that to 80. Shift 1 over x. Add that to 200. Shift 1 over x. Add that to 100. Shift 1 over x. Add that finally to 125, shift 1 over x equals that value we've got there isn't our answer yet. What we've calculated there is RT. We want 1 over RT. So one last time, shift 1 over x, that changes it to the value. So what I've calculated is 21.7 mega ohms. So I'm going to jot that down. 21.7 mega ohm right and just to check let's do it on this okay, I'll try and hold it clearly to the thing because it's not lit or anything but let's do it again so in this case there's no shift 1 over x it's just hitting that 1 over x button this is how you do it on an iPhone if you turn your phone sideways so again 250 1 over x plus 150 1 over x plus 80 1 over x plus 200 1 over x plus 100 1 over x plus 1 2 f oh, 1 2 5 I need to delete that 2 5 1 over x equals 0.046 that's RT so one more 1 over x and I get 21.66 which is rounded up to 21.7 so it works what do I now do with this number that number I compare to the wiring regulation and as the overall value for this combination of circuits is greater than 1 mega ohm the wiring regulations are happy all right so this, so it's to simulate if we had the consumer unit itself with one, two, three, four, five, six circuits, we've tested these circuits individually. We have now calculated what would actually be the value if we were instead to turn all of these MCBs on, yank the tails out or something, and then test to the supply of the board with our instrument. And we've tested the whole system together in parallel. That's the requirement of the regulation. I'll read it again. If it's satisfactory if the main switchboard and each distribution circuit is tested separately, this is a distribution circuit and that's a board. With all its final circuits connected, so on, with loads removed. Okay? If you go around testing a circuit and saying this circuit is more than one mega ohm, it must be okay. If you're in the 200 area or in the infinity range of your instrument, you're probably fine. You're probably fine. But if you've got a measurement that's near critical or you're questioning, maybe you're on a periodic, you've got to say to yourself, what will happen if I combine the other circuits that's on the same one panel? That's what the regulation is saying. So we test to the regs. If you're saying they're good, it means you're saying this has happened. And this is why we do this on inspection and testing courses.
If you have any more problems with it, I can always create other scenarios. Have a play with this. You can make it all up. Or maybe look at a schedule of test results from a test you've done recently. If you've got all the individual values, you can just crunch the numbers. Your qualifying supervisor might do that for you. That's what I do. I'll have X amount of guys taking single values down. Then when I do the QS summary, I'll calculate the overall. Works quite well that way. But don't forget this regulation and don't forget why you've been doing this on testing courses. Hopefully this has helped. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more of these. If you want to give me examples for me to calculate for you. If you want to give any feedback on this or whatever. I'm going to do a testing series which I'll link this to anyway and I'll have another go at this in the testing series using both the common denominator method as well. Alright then, I'll leave this video here and I'll see you in another one soon. Bye bye now.